What's going on guys? Today we'll be taking a look at the Rhino Arc. But before we get into that, I want to give a huge shout out to you guys for helping the channel reach 4K subscribers. So in celebration of that, I decided to upload this video in 4K. So if any of you guys have 4K displays, be sure to check this out in 4K. And once again, I really appreciate the support. All right, now earlier this year, I did a review on the Rhino Motion. So I won't be going into too much detail about that. But if you haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to leave annotations so you guys can check that out. With that said, Let's get to it. This is the Rhino Arc. Now obviously everything that you saw in the intro isn't in this box. There are actually three separate parts that make up that entire unit. Now each one of those parts can be purchased individually or in a bundle. However, the arc will only work if you already have the Rhino slider and motion. But I'll go over each part a little bit later. As always, Rhino did a nice job with the presentation. Inside the box you have your standard manual and just underneath that you'll find the Rhino arc. This device includes a USB cable. This cable is used to charge the device and update the firmware when needed. A connection cable, this connects the Rhino Arc to the Rhino Motion Controller, a USB charging adapter, and the Rhino Arc. So basically what the Arc does is, it attaches to your Rhino slider and allows you to capture motorized panning motion. But we'll take a closer look to see how well this device works. Now just like all of my other Rhino devices, the Arc is really well made. This device supports 3 8 inch mounts and can support up to 10 pounds of center weight. On the side you'll find your power button and the USB connection port. On the front you have a camera port. Now this allows you to connect the device to your camera so that you can control your shutter during time lapse. On the opposite side you have your controller port. This connects from the controller to the arc. Now just in between these ports you have a display screen. And this will show you when the device is paired and it will also show you the battery life. All around the device you have set screws. And these screws are used to orientate the device in the correct direction. On the bottom you have a 3 8 inch mount. Now this is the complete unit. You have the Rhino Evo slider which consists of the slider minus the controller and the motor the Rhino Motion, which consists of just the controller and the motor, and you have the Arc. Now like I said earlier, in order to use the Arc, you must first purchase the Rhino Slider and Rhino Motion. To get started, you'll need to attach the Arc to the carriage on the slider. Now you'll want to spin this one firmly, but you don't want to over tighten it. What you're looking at now is the front of the Arc and the front of the slider, but what you'll want is the front of the Arc facing the rear of the slider. Now we've already spun the arc as far as we could, so now what we'll have to do is unscrew the set screws. Now I didn't find a hex wrench in the box, but I'm sure one comes with the device. At any rate, you'll need one to unscrew the set screws. Once that's done, you'll be able to turn the arc so that the screen faces the rear. After that, simply tighten the set screws. Next you'll want to connect the 3.5 cable to the controller port on the arc and the other end to the controller. Now you're ready to power on the device. By default, the device will read not paired. So to get this paired, you'll need to turn on the remote control. Go to settings, select art, turn it on, and you're good to go. Now what's cool about this device is it has a built-in battery. So you can charge this up, take it out, and not have to worry about AC power. Preferably, you'll want to attach a ball head to this device. Now this will allow you to easily level your slider or angle your camera in the direction that you want to shoot. I'm using the Manfrotto 496 RC2 ball head. Once attached, you simply mount your camera. Now I'll set up a move. For this demonstration, I'll set up a live motion, but you can also set up a time lapse with this device. Select live motion. From here, I'll set up a turn wheel slide. Now create a move does the same thing, except it gives you more options and control. Next, I'll calibrate the device. This will move the device to its default start position. It also does some internal calculations so that it knows how far the device is from end to end. Now I will bump the ends during calibration, but like I said, this is just so that the device knows where the ends are. Once you actually perform a move, the device ramps down to avoid touching the ends. So now you'll turn the wheel to point the camera in the direction that you want it to start in. Once set, the device will move to the opposite end. Now you'll want to set the out point. So you'll turn the wheel in the direction that you want the camera to end at. Now once I start my move, you can see that the camera turns in accordance to the in and out points that I set. Now there's several different combinations of pannings and slides that you can use to get some really creative shots. You can control the speed, create push and pull shots, set continuous moves. This is where the device moves back and forth automatically for a specified amount of time. You can even rotate the device 270 degrees. 
Now this is gonna come in pretty handy for my room tour. Create panoramic shots. Now this is pretty cool because it gives you the appearance that the background is moving and the subject is standing still. Now there is one thing that I don't like about this device, the cable. Now, I found that sometimes the cable gets caught in between the rail and the carriage. Now each time it happens, it usually works itself out, but it does ruin the shot. Now I'm not exactly sure why Rhino decided to go this route. I think that using Bluetooth to connect these devices would have been much better. Now to be honest, I knew that these were wired connections before I purchased it, so I really can't complain that much, but it's still something that I don't like, so I thought I'd mention it. But besides that, this device is great. It not only improves the consistency of my slides and pans, but it also saves me a lot of time not having to reshoot B-roll over and over to get that perfect motion. Aside from that, it also gives me the flexibility to get from behind the camera and still capture motion. Now yeah, it can be a bit pricey at about 1600 bucks for the bundle, but if you're using it to make money, it'll definitely improve your production and productivity, which could possibly lead to more gigs and ultimately pay for itself over time. Now I do want to talk about Rhino's customer support because I did have an issue with my controller. Now I'm not bringing this up to shed any negative light on Rhino because I can't think of too many brands that I've never had some type of problem with. Sometimes things just happen. But anyway, I ended up emailing Rhino in a matter of about 15 minutes I got a response from them. And they ended up responding in a way that you would want a company to respond which was no problem, send it in and we'll take care of it. Which is all that they're required to do. But in this situation, it was a Monday and I had an event that I was scheduled to shoot on that Sunday. So we went back and forth via email and they were so responsive that it almost felt like we were chatting. But to make a long story short, they ended up overnighting me a new controller on Tuesday and I ended up receiving it on Wednesday. Now to be clear, Rhino didn't give this device to me for free, nor did they give it to me at a discounted rate. I purchased this myself. But for those of you that follow me and have seen my Ravelli review, then you know that I'm a huge advocate of good customer support. Because it doesn't matter how great a device is or how huge the brand is, there's always a chance of something happening. And for me, it's not always about something happening, it's about how the company responds when something does. So thumbs up to Rhino for excellent customer support. But um, y'all still need to Bluetooth this thing and get rid of these cables. <laughs> but that's my review. I'll leave a link in the description just in case you guys want to check this out. So until next time, peace.